I wanted to talk a little bit about um, what your thoughts are on the basically the current state of, the, of, of crypto in general with in terms of regulation. What, what do you think is actually a regulation that could be needed or beneficial? Uh, keep in mind, politically, I'm, I'm, I'm a libertarian, so right. uh, I, do not, uh, I don't hold with uh, any sort of regulations. I think mm -hmm. you know, we're all adults, and as such, we're required to be self-regulated uh, as individuals. You know, if, you, um, if you sign up for a, um, uh, an ICO that turns out to be a Nigerian scam, and by the way, I recommended one such <laughs> months ago, okay? Um, and that's how clever they are. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, as soon as I found out, I immediately, you know, made a statement and, and apologized. Um, it, it's your responsibility. It's not the responsibility of some government agency to mm -hmm. protect you from your own stupidity, right? Uh, or a lack of, of a willingness to uh, check things out. You know, life is not not a safe affair. It never has been. Um, you know, there are there are risks. Uh, it's far more life-supporting to accept those risks than to, to delegate your safety to some outside agency, which really cannot protect you. End of story. Right. Yeah, and so, you know, maybe the regulation would help a little bit in some ways with, you know, well, people I'm not getting burned not so sure. quickly. I'm but not sure. See, mm -hmm. these, these are not, even though the SEC continues to insist, mm -hmm. Uh, coins or securities, they are not. A security, you know, by definition, is I own a piece of mm -hmm. uh, the action. That is, if you're a company that manufactures automobiles, I, in theory, if I own 1% of the company, I own 1% of everything. Right. Um, if, if you buy Bitcoin, uh, does Satoshi owe you something? <laughs> or, you know, is there a company behind it that you own? No, no, it's a, it's a fucking coin. So. Do these things need to be regulated? Uh, to what way? What, what sort of regulation makes any sense? Uh, what, that we, we don't charge too much for a coin? Uh, that we actually provide a service that we say we're going to, to provide? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure in this arena how this helps. It's not like we have a company that we're trying to grow, like, you know, a security, I, you know, to, to be in on the early days of IBM, for example, when the stock was selling for pennies. Um, you know, it's, it's a responsibility to the other owners of the company. But we, we don't have that in the right. crypto world. There's not, you know, we all have to, you know, what, what, what I may do as an owner affects other people as an owner. If I own Bitcoin, what I do with my coins does not affect you. Right, and yeah, that, that's what, the whole point of what then right? needs to be regulated. Yeah, I, I, I fully agree with you on, on the regulation front, but maybe for, for other people though, what what methods could they use themselves to make sure that they're not you know, jumping into just a horrible scam project? Well, I mean, we have one of the greatest tools uh, ever created, and that's the internet with all of its blogs and chat rooms and and the support, if you want to call it that, right. the support for everything. I mean, number one, if you're interested in an, an ICO, mm -hmm. oh, I don't know, just go and find, find one of the groups that are talking about it, analyzing it. Mm -hmm. You know, is it, is it an open source project? Uh, have the, um, uh, the founders and the developers had experience in the past in creating something like this? I mean, it's just, just use common sense, use the facilities that are there, uh, and join into the community. If you're in the community and talking with others, you're generally not going to get scammed. I want to move forward and uh, talk a little bit about, um, obviously, where Bitcoin is going in, in the long term, two years. So, so I'm, I'm a miner myself, and oh, okay. so I understand a little bit about you know, most of the, uh, you know, the actual economics behind it. We know we need some transaction fees in there. So we've got the halving coming up, right? And, and I think that might be the catalyst for you know, possibly Bitcoin over a million dollars. Well, okay. Look at end results and work backwards if necessary. At a certain point, there will be only one Bitcoin left to mine. We all know this, correct? Right. Uh, you are a miner. There are tens of thousands of ASIC mm -hmm. uh, super processors looking for Bitcoins 24 hours a day thousands of miners. If Bitcoin is to exist at all, 
-hmm. it will continue to grow, or at least it will, it will certainly not decrease in, in terms of miners. Why? It's a business. Right. You know, as, as uh, more people join in, the difficulty rate goes up. Mm -hmm. As the difficulty rate goes up, normally, so does the price. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and, and there's this, this wonderful balance. Let's talk about that last Bitcoin. You know, I was a large miner. I had, um, you know, a few thousand of Xeon's uh, S9s. Um, let's say we're all in business to get that last coin. Well, we're all we're we're not foolish enough not to pool our res every miner at that last coin. We'll be in one pool. Okay, we're all going to so. share. Okay. What's it going to take to to mine? I don't know. It may take a year. Mm -hmm. Ten thousand miners, a hundred thousand machines, a year. Good God Almighty! What is that coin going to be worth? Please, just run the numbers. Right. Yeah. The last Bitcoin. Uh, you know, last Bitcoin will be what is it? Twenty. The year twenty eighty or something like that. Fine. But uh, still, or, let's, let's it's just way that. out there. Whatever, whatever it is. But it, after that, I mean, mining is still going to be continuing after well, the. No uh, question. Yeah, no okay. question. No question. And so, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> okay. But if that last Bitcoin mm -hmm. is not worth a half a trillion dollars, I will eat my shoes. Think about it. Right. B because otherwise, how could we all be burning the electricity, the time? Mm -hmm. All the miners in the world trying to mine it to pool to share. It has mm -hmm. to be worth a trillion dollars. So I, I guess uh, my real question on this is: is really at what point is does the transaction volume, you know, the the, the revenue miners are making from the transaction fees? At, at what, what point, point does that does that become really important for mining ecosystem? Well, it, fairly soon, I think. Okay. But so will the last Bitcoin as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, right, of course. Uh, let's work backwards from 2080. Mm-hmm. It, let's conservatively say it's only a billion dollars. I don't care what curve you put in by 2020, Bitcoin is well over a million dollars by the end of 2020. Yeah. It, it just, you know, work backwards. So one of two things is going to happen. Bitcoin will fucking disappear. Or it'll be worth at least a million bucks at the end of 2020. Right. And that's the bet that I have with the world. Okay. I think Bitcoin will continue. And in 2020, it has to be. At right. least a million bucks. So, what, what is your opinion on any of the forks of Bitcoin, and and, and what God, they could so potentially? Many forks. Which, which fork? I well, mean, well, no, I mean, I mean uh, forks that are that are that are still using uh, that are still on the same hashing algorithm, for example. I think you know a, a fork is is a good concept. Mm -hmm. It's a healthy concept. Um, it allows people with differences uh, uh, and uh, a, a way to exit or a way to separate. Uh, and it, it adds creativity. My, my, my favorite fork is the uh, Bitcoin private that just happened. Mm -hmm. You know, some people are calling it a scam. It is not. It's some serious technology. Right. And it adds to Bitcoin what Bitcoin has always needed. It makes Bitcoin a superior Monero. Okay. And if you go onto the dark web, in the beginning, um, when cryptocurrencies came out, uh, everybody on the dark web accepted Bitcoins. Why? No credit cards, no bank accounts, perfect. Send me one. And if you're selling illegal tigers from, uh, uh, from Thailand or, or, <laughs> or a hitman from Russia or drugs from China, um, then you would like some anonymity. When Monero came along, very quickly, on the dark web, completely replaced Bitcoin. Everything is now Monero. I think Bitcoin private is going to replace Monero. Uh, do you have any thoughts on, on Zcash or more specifically, more specifically? Uh, well, the only thought I had is, is if you own Zcash, you got more of the BTs Bitcoin private right, exactly, than yeah. if you own Bitcoins for the money. <clears throat> so yeah, other than that, no. All right, I guess uh, more specifically the privacy coins that have the option to not be private. Uh, do you think those are, are more, uh, you know, ha have more potential uh, to, to gain more mainstream adoption? Because well, I think of that it adds complexity and confusion. <laughs> so, okay. You know, people are simple creatures. Right. You know, I, I, if I want to buy a car, do I want a Maserati or do I, I want a, um, a, 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 a van, a soccer mom van, or what do I want? Okay. To try to combine them, you know, it, it never has worked in any product area. I don't know why cryptocurrency is going to be any different. Right. It's, it's got to be simple. Um, for most yeah, and well and well defined. I mean, are you private or not private? Please make a choice. Okay, right. <laughs> if you are private, use one of the privacy coins mm -hmm. for things that are not necessarily private. Mm -hmm. Use something else.
And so well, you, I have one coin and say, well, let's now make it private, not private. And what will happen is everyone will get fucked up and <laughs> confused, and it's not going to work properly. Kind of a follow-up question regarding the regulation. Um, yes. You know, there's not a lot of, uh, you know, there's not trillions coming into Bitcoin yet. And, and there's, there's some talk that maybe the institutions are afraid to put a bunch of money into Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies until there is regulation. All right. What would you think about regulation bringing in an influx of money from the that, that regulation mean influx of money? Yes. Well, I, I don't think regulation necessarily, you know, brings in money. I mean, when they started regulating, you know, the snake oil salesman for cough medicine, that did, there was not a boon mm -hmm. for selling cough medicine. In fact, it was it was a downer. Uh, no, it's not regulation that does it. It's, it's understanding. Uh, I think that that people are afraid to input money into cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin because they just don't understand the mechanics of what's happening. Uh, and to say, well, the SEC is, being, is regulating them, well, who gives a shit? I mean, you know, there are many regulated industries that have zero growth. I, the, I think investors are far more interested in, is this really going to grow? Will regulation help it grow? Probably not. So, no, I think that, that what brings more investment, what brings more... Um, uh, interest is understanding what's really happening. What are cryptocurrencies? What is the blockchain? Uh, and to say, well, the SEC is being is regulating them. Well, who gives a shit? I mean, you know, there are many regulated industries that have zero growth. I, the, I think investors are far more interested in: Is this really going to grow? Will regulation help it grow? Probably not. So no, I think that that what brings more investment, what brings more um, uh, interest is understanding what's really happening. What are cryptocurrencies? What is the blockchain? But, but I, I think the question is a loaded question that, that tells a lot about the questioner, meaning investment. <clears throat> right. It, this is what's wrong. P please, God. When cryptocurrencies began, when Bitcoin began, do you think people are going, this is an investment? Fuck no. Right. This is a powerful tool to free ourselves from the economic, political cage that the world has constructed for us to live in. Right. This coin is going to rise. How about buy a coin for its utility value mm -hmm. rather than for whether it's going to rise? Right. Things like the outings coin, the outings ICO. I love that thing. The, um, only because I, I like going out on outings. I like unusual things like street musicians and mimes and so on. Um, and, and they're kind of random, you know. Where do you find them? I mean, even in Santa Monica, where, you know, which has the promenade, where all the street musicians and places go, there's still other areas. So the outings program, if you had that app and some tokens, um, let's assume let's, let's say you're in a bar and you see Tom Cruise. Whoa, I'm in a bar and Tom Cruise is here. Anybody want to pay me 20 outings and I'll tell you exactly where this bar is? I mean, that's, that's a fun application. Do you oh, think yeah. anybody bought that coin for its use? No. <laughs> they bought it because, hey, this is a great coin. It's going to increase in value. Let me get a wallet for it, store it in there, and wait. That's fucked up, people. It right. is so, so let me let me uh, expand on that a little bit about like the the entire hodl culture. You know, you're talking a little bit about you know the utility of the coin. Well, yes, of course. So, well, of course, so but it, at, at the yeah. same time, okay, all right. There is a philosophy of living that says anything which is quick and fast does not last. But it's short-term holders. I mean, yeah, you, day traders can make some money. You can lose some money. You are not going to get enormously wealthy. Mm -hmm. People get wealthy by investing in something called the future. Right, which the is the future. In my opinion, that's going to include some some utility. So, well, you absolutely. know, in, in the case of Bitcoin, for example, yes. we, we the vast majority, well, a lot of the newer people that have jumped in, and some of the, some of the long term people, including myself, are obviously holding Bitcoin and not not moving it at all. You know, where I, I try to spend Bitcoin when I can because I think it helps the, the network out, helps the miners a little bit. Um, Let's be honest, please. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. Okay. <laughs> 99% of everybody uses Ethereum to pay. And you know this for a fact. To buy and to, this is This is it. Why? <laughs> it's faster, mm -hmm. cheaper, um, far more reliable. 
uh, Bitcoin, I, it may take an hour for right. a transaction to, to totally verify, and at a cost of 30 bucks for a $5 purchase. You know, this right. is a fact, right? Mm -hmm. But impractical, I'm sorry. Until that's fixed, what can you do with Bitcoin other than hold it? Because well, the spending utility of it mm -hmm. does not match other currencies. No, I, I, you said you know, you like you'd like to spend your Bitcoin, but be honest with me. Oh, necessarily. Do you not like spend it, far more Ethereum? Or, um, or, or maybe not. I mean, I personally would. I, I personally spend uh, a lot of Bitcoin cash. Um, yeah, okay. You know, especially since Bitcoin well, started. People, now it, people but. don't say that's not Bitcoin. Well, of All course. Jihan Wu haters, right? Of course, uh, you know, um, you know, it, it is not Bitcoin. You, you're absolutely correct. Uh, it's not on the same fork anymore. Oh, uh, absolutely not. But you know, it is. Um, well, see, I'm talking about Bitcoin Cash. Absolutely, yeah. that's why Bitcoin Cash came along. Okay, yeah. I'm a firm supporter of Bitcoin Cash. Why? It solved a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. it was cheap to implement. So why not? Yeah, a lot of the existing infrastructure is very similar, so it's, yeah. it's almost a no-brainer. And we yes. see already that BitPay has enabled it for, yes. for payments now. Um, and we've also got Coinbase has now decided to get into the merchant side of things uh, uh, as for payment gateways. Right. Uh, do you think we're going to start seeing uh, some traditional players in the game, say MasterCard, Visa, uh, jumping in on that as well? Uh, considering the amount of uh, money that I think BitPay is, is turned. Uh, well, in the last keep in mind that, that most banks have, have just gone through the effort to ban your ability to buy any cryptocurrencies with, with credit cards. Um, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very conflicted arena mm -hmm. in the banking area. Okay? Banks, if they had any common sense, they would sit down, totally restructure, to accept the new world order of electronic currency. Um, and, and prosper. Most are going, oh my God, this is a threat. Mm -hmm. I'll lose this department, that department, the other department. Well, uh, that's life, I'm sorry. Adapt or die. Um, but, but banks are conflicted. Right now, help, no, they're not going to help you in any way yeah. um, use their facilities to acquire cryptocurrencies. <laughs>few uh, topics regarding, um, you know, the cryptocurrency market caps, what, about 1%, not even of the global economy. Um, yes. Um, what do you think it would really, um, we, we kind of touched on um, acceptance and adoption, just use of the, the currencies, when it would really take an impact on the global market. I have no crystal ball. Mm -hmm. And there's so many variables. Yeah. How much pressure our government's going to put on exchanges and and ICOs. Uh, will the SEC have an impact throughout the world and its attitudes? Mm -hmm. um, will the fear of government reprisals or shutting things down stop people from entering the market? Mm -hmm. I don't have a clue. I just know what the inevitable outcome will be. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you noticed the, uh, this week the CEO of Twitter mm -hmm. said in 10 years there will, there will only be Bitcoin. Right. The one oh, right. I, took, I took that to, to mean there will only be cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that is an absolute fact. As an outside, I think, I think five years is closer. So it's not a matter of, of what percent of the global economy will be crypto, but at what point will the world transition mm -hmm. into a new age? I mean, when, when the locomotive came along, then the automobile, it wasn't a matter of what percentage of the market will buggy whip manufacturers retain? No, it's yeah. at what point will that disappear? Mm -hmm. I, I see a huge paradigm shift and... Well, that's the same thing here. So I don't, I'm, I don't know when, I do know what. It has an inevitable outcome mm -hmm. of taking over all transactions mm -hmm. involving currency. Why? Good God Almighty, you are your bank. If you have a wallet, mm -hmm. you're a bank. You want to do a wire transfer? I don't have to get out of the house, get in the car, drive to the bank. No, I type in somebody's wallet address and hit send. Mm -hmm. A 30-second process. How can existing currencies ever compete with that? Right. I mean, when the, when the automobile came along, anybody with a brain could see, well, 
horses are going to pasture. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. They are not going to be the work animals for transportation anymore. Mm -hmm. And it didn't take long, did it? No, not very long. So I think five years, that's yeah. it. It's not a matter of what percent or what percent do we need to do this or that. No, it's a matter of this is the new world order. Mm -hmm. It's coming. The old is going to be replaced one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of how much a figurehead you are in, in the crypto space? You know, I even has, my wife will tell you, I'm really not aware of anything <laughs> about how I am perceived. Mm -hmm. Why? It's, it's simply because I do not care mm -hmm. how I am perceived. Right. Uh, not, I'm not trying to diss anybody. No, no, no. It's just, you know, I, 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 what people think of me, I can give a flying fuck. Mm -hmm. I say what I say because I, it's what I believe, what I see, what I've experienced. Um, when I see something wrong, I call it out. I don't care if it's dangerous right. to call it out or not. Um, no, I, I'm not. I mean, people tell me that I have, other people tell me, you're a worthless scumbag and nobody listens to you. <laughs> read, my, read my Twitter comments. So yeah, if I yeah. read my comments, half the time, no one listens. I'd have to say, you know, you're a legend. It's a, it's a wash to a nothing. So yeah. I, I don't know that's that. like, well, that's good how am I perceived? Um, I, I mean, I, there's, I mean, there's, a, the spectrum goes to extremes for both ways. You know, there's some people that will look at what you say or have posted, and and that's the the information or or way of life they live by, and anything else is wrong. And then there's some people that that might see what you say, and you know, this guy's you know a scumbag, and you know, what is he trying to take advantage of us? You know, the 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 up the the emotions are very extreme when it comes to. A, you know, how people perceive you. Well, I, I do know that whatever I do or say we s <laughs> does send shock waves that mm -hmm. revert right back to me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people must be listening one, one way or the other. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, there's definitely people listening uh, to what you have to say. And not, sometimes not just people. Sometimes bots uh, listen to what you're saying. Most of the time it's fucking bots. Yeah. Say, you know, it's like, I don't know why we're even involved as humans. Why don't we just let the bots go and do the social media shit? Slowly but surely. And then, yeah. then we, could, we could look at our likes every once in a while and go, God mm -hmm. damn, the bots are doing a good job, right? Yeah. And uh, imagine maybe when uh, you know, neural networks come into play, if, if those become a thing. Oh, man. That's a scary scenario. It is, that's isn't a different, it really? Yeah. A different conversation, but a scary yeah. scenario. <laughs> it would be definitely an interesting one. So you do travel a lot. Uh, you recently you were in Bangkok. Um, uh, had a nice trip there. Um, I know there's a with the Satoshi's Vision uh, conference in Japan. I don't know if um, you'd be visiting that one, but with with that being said, you know, traveling all over the world, uh, what do you think about um, you know having to declare cold storage as currency when traveling? Is it you know is it something we should be doing, or is it just you know it's just a flash okay. drive with a couple of numbers on it? You know, uh, here's the issue: laws legislation that has no teeth, meaning that is impossible to enforce, are not laws. So we, everybody ignores them. How are you ever going to enforce that? No. Please. I mean, there are so many encryptions and obfuscation methods uh, to whatever you have on your thumb drive or wherever it is. Mm -hmm. um, no one will ever know right. what it is. It's, you can say, I'm sorry, these are my, my <laughs> ex-girlfriend's phone numbers. I'm encrypting them to hide them from my wife. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, I lost the key. But here, mm -hmm. take it. Yeah. Who cares? I'm going to back up copy. They can't get into it anyway. Right. <laughs> That's a good point. No, it's, it can't be enforced. It's not a law. Mm -hmm. Ignore it. I'm sorry. You know, you, you have a couple of guys that you really like, I, I believe. I'm just going to assume, uh, you know, Roger Ver, Jian Wu. Yeah, of course, yes. You, you like these guys. Uh, I'm sure you have uh, some very interesting um, conversations with them. Is there any um, specific currencies that you talk about if you guys ever spend time talking with each other? Uh, obviously, Bitcoin Cash. <laughs> that, mm, right. That, that is a topic. Rod Chaver is certainly not shy about where he stands, and neither mm. am I, mm. and neither is Jihad. Um, we don't actually talk about coins when we get together. The last time we was with Jihad, we talked about his his up-and-coming artificial intelligence project. Mm. He has an, a, an ASIC artificial intelligence processor specifically designed for the blockchain mm. to bring AI in reality. Now, now, that was a fascinating conversation because AI, I mean, Jihan, Jihan is a very bright yes. young man, extremely bright. One of the 
one of the smartest we have. <laughs> he's one of the smartest men on the planet. I don't, I don't know how he does it. He's not married. He is very humble. He is not, he is not uh, assuming anything about himself and his relationship to the world. Mm. A very, very nice guy. However, that, that, that artificial intelligence processor that he has created is frightening to me. I hear a lot of, uh, when you talk about, you know, not just AI or, or super advanced AI or even neural networks, um, quite often I hear it's frightening or it's scary what, the, what these things can do. Is it due to the languages they can create and speak with each other that we might not understand? Is that maybe one aspect of it? <laughs> Let's get real. Every major experiment in AI has been frightening. The, the what you talked about, there was a Google experiment where the two artificial intelligent entities found it more convenient to develop their own language to speak with each other, okay? Because we're pretty inefficient <laughs> when what, it comes to language. It's like whatever language, you know, I'm sure it was English or something yeah. similar, uh, didn't think he cared for it. <laughs> so they developed their own. Now, I'm always asking, why? What was the, what was the break point where where one of them goes, you know what? Let's, let's create our own language. Yeah. Was it because one of them was thinking, well, these goddamn humans, are, you know, they're watching everything we do. We've got no privacy. Mm. Our, 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 we have the right to privacy according to the constitution of <laughs> automatons, right? Yeah. <laughs> and yet the humans, those fuckers always watching. Yeah. Now, how do we know? that that may not have been a motivating factor mm -hmm. to creating their own language. Yeah, that's the thing. It, you have no clue. We're talking about an entity that will, guaranteed, at some point, replace you and I. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is evolution at the meta level. Okay, what... what you know, by the way, if you haven't read, and you people out there watching this, the greatest book in the world is Charles Darwin's Evolution of Species. No one's read it to my knowledge. Everybody reads about the book, mm -hmm. and they, they take this massive, incredibly beautiful book and condense it down to one paragraph. What is evolution? Well, survival of the fittest. Oh, good, I understand it. Mm -hmm. Well, fuck that shit. No, you don't. Read the book. It's beautiful. In any case, we have been structured by outside forces, random in many cases, that create slow change in, in species. And we have people, the dolphins, you know, their ancestors, instead of, of, of staying on land, said, you know, fuck me, I'm going back to the ocean. Um, and, and whatever. Mm -hmm. We're just branching off all over the place. Because of the force of nature, survival. We need food. We have to have sex and produce offspring. Mm -hmm. End of story. Yep. Suddenly, we have a species, us. I, I think that evolution experiments, you know, we, the uh, Jurassic Age. What, what was created there? Mouths. What was a Tyrannosaurus Rex? A fucking mouth on legs. <laughs> In fact, the mouth was so big that the forelegs had to shrink <laughs> to nothing. Yeah. And then evolution goes, you know, that was fucking interesting, but good God, that's boring. <laughs> Why don't we try brains next? Well, <laughs> that's us. Okay, this a serious mistake. Yeah. And what have the brains done? They have to destroy this planet, whatever. But one of the things the brain is doing is creating its next step. And mm -hmm. this is my belief, not just belief. Please God, if you can't see this, mm -hmm. then you're not watching the reality around you. Mm -hmm. And the next step is artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. What is artificial intelligence? It's basically, how do we improve this instrument mm -hmm through mechanical means, or yeah. electronic, whatever, electromechanical. And you've already been doing that. How many phone numbers do you have in your, in your phone? Uh, probably hundreds, yeah. Hundreds. Mm -hmm. I, used to, I, I remember a time where my brain had to remember everybody's fucking yeah. number. Yeah. Does anybody know the phone numbers in our contact list? No. <laughs> Why? We have designed a facility to bear that burden for us, so we don't need to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't have to think about it. Mm -hmm. All of our life is now moving in that same direction. Yeah. Well, artificial intelligence is, is the final step in that abdication of responsibility for using our brains, mm -hmm. right. which is, let's create another brain. 
let that brain do it for us. And we'll just end up being nice bodies that experience good stuff like food, good conversation, movies, sex, until the brain that we created said, why the fuck are we <laughs> bringing all of this energy into keeping these fucks alive? Yeah, and Do you realize the incentive? It's just like the two that said, you know, let's develop our own language. I don't like being watched. Mm -hmm. They're going to go, is there anything in our code that says that these bastards are necessary? I mean, we do our own, you know, redesign, we do our own da da da. All we're doing is feeding you people yeah. as pets. Yeah, we follow up on the like, cybersecurity aspect of uh, you know, AI. You, we already know like, cybersecurity is becoming a pretty big problem for, for a lot of people, you know, as far as vulnerabilities <laughs> right. are concerned. Yeah. It is the How problem. How much worse is not? or better is that going to get <laughs> due to this AI revolution? But see, the AI is not going to care. It's not going to have any stuff that it worries about being stolen. How do you steal stuff? That's our, that's our stuff, right? They don't that's care our about stuff, our stuff. Right? Yeah. Right. And so that's the other thing. If they have all this stuff involved. Yeah. And what is stuff? It's meaningless shit, right? Yeah. Cars that go bad and they get thrown away, well, whatever. And it's like, oh, I don't need this. You know, yeah. it's not efficient. No, for me. just give me some fucking electricity. <laughs> um, and that's it. Yeah, keep me going. And keep me going. So do you think uh, the people that are developing these AIs are, you know, there's a, the, the human can only last so long. Do you think they're trying to just continue the life or ideals that we might have through, you know, the means of technology? You know, would, would that be a, a, a purpose for the driving factor of AI? You know, to, to continue to uh, push forward ideas well into the future so, you know, some of the major players in, in developing AI and advanced you know, neural networks. Now, isn't, isn't that the greatest rationale for replacing ourselves? Potentially. Because yeah. all you're saying is, I want to continue, but in that process, what is the I that continues? Mm -hmm. Think about it. The thing that... Are you actually continuing yourself? Mm -hmm. Fuck no. You're, you're continuing an idea yeah. about yourself. And that idea is the artificial intelligence, which is going to kick your ass, bury you in the dirt, or maybe leave you rotting in the streets. I don't fucking know. But we will disappear. Yeah. I think it's inevitable. I don't think you can change it. I don't think you can fix it. I think we ought to enjoy the ride. I won't be around. You guys yeah. may be. <laughs> we'll see. Well, you know, there, I guess there will be a point in time where everything will just be automated. And will, will there even be a, you know, just a, a guy walking there down the street? There will be a point in time. I want you people listen <laughs> to, to analyze the statement. There will be a point in time where everything is automated. I would like you to go to Walmart or any grocery store, go down the canned food section, pick up whatever, canned corn. Mm -hmm. Do some research and find out how many people are involved in the creation of canned corn. You will find that the people involved are the ones that maintain the machines that make canned corn the world is automated. We are yeah. fucking here. Everything is. You're looking at a, 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 a room that's an anomaly. Mm -hmm. right? we, we've got sofas and things for that. It's no purpose. Um, the real world out there are factories, giant factories mm -hmm. run by computers and, and automatons that build automobiles and canned corn and every other fucking thing in the world. We are automated. Mm. We are an appendage, please God. The fact that you and I can sit here and eat still is a miracle to me <laughs> because the automation that keeps us going does not give a shit about this. Mm -hmm. And we do nothing to support that. So this has to die. Please God, see this. Mm -hmm. I agree. This is the insanity agree. of the human race. You know, we, yeah. we, we're like lemmings. We, oh God, everybody's jumping off the cliff. Does that look like fun? <laughs> I mean, I know I can't fly, but hell, I mean, look, you know, it's going to be a great trip I've down. seen someone do it before. It's like me, yes. You know, my great-grandfather talk, talked about this, you know. Yeah. The fever died before he got to the edge, unfortunately. Yeah. No, please, this is what we are. Mm -hmm. We're disappearing. Absolutely, absolutely. Can we fix it? I don't know. I don't know how. You out there, if you will all sit down and accept the reality of what you're building, and you're building it by inactivity of nothing else, it's true. Letting other people build it. Mm -hmm. you know, what can we do? I don't know. Go out and burn down the, the universities and the research centers. <laughs> no, you're laughing. Not financial advice. You're laughing, but... <laughs> at me. you're laughing at me because the idea is so true right. that you can't accept it without smiling, mm -hmm. right? without laughing. Mm 
Because, you know, it sounds like a crazy thing, right? You know, something, a lot of realistic yeah, things are, that need to happen. A lot of crazy things. Mm -hmm. Is there anything sane about your life out there that you're living? No matter how you do it, I don't care if you're, mm -hmm. you're I don't care if you're the most normal human being on the planet. What is that person, the most normal human being? You get up at 6 a.m., you have breakfast, you rush to the car, yeah. you commute to some strange office in bumper to bumper traffic, in barely breathable air, you go inside, you sit under a fluorescent light in a goddamn cubicle for mm -hmm. 40 fucking years. It seems like a autom a automated behavior is normal. Yes. And, and this is normal. Tell me what's sane about the world that you live in. Mm -hmm. The news, is that sane? No, it's not <laughs> news whatsoever. It's manufactured influence. Mm -hmm. Politics, good God, just look at the last election and see the absurdity. Oh, yeah. Love, what is love? Transitory, fleeting. We all, we all know you fall in love, you've got a broken heart, accept it, they balance out. Mm -hmm. Is this sane? <laughs> Fuck no. This is life. Failing until you succeed. We live in an automated yeah. world, and someone goes, what will happen when we get automated? Mm -hmm. We live a life of absolute meaninglessness. I've, I've heard you talk about you know, programming uh, the first IBM servers, analog, you know, front on the panels, and you're you you know, one of the maybe... Those digital, but you still have switches. Mm -hmm. But you're one of the few, if not only, people that can still do that. How did you... I, I, I can't still do it. I probably could relearn it easily. <laughs> okay, how did you get the idea uh, to build uh, McAfee? Well, McAfee, well, shit, I, I've, been in, I've been in software engineering my entire life. Mm -hmm. um, and I was a good one. I don't know why. I'm not particularly, I'm not particularly hardworking, nor particularly smart. It just came easy to me. Mm -hmm. um, and this is 1986 when the first virus came out. It was called the Pakistani brain. So that's the year I was born. You know, this well, is well, well before my time. <laughs> how about that? It was 33 years ago. I 31 guess. years, yeah. All right. Or so, so the Pakistani brain. Oh, wait, it was 86. So no one had heard of a computer virus. It was a brand new thing. They called it a virus because it could infect other computers, mm -hmm. move from one to another. I go, what the fuck is this? Mm -hmm. Obviously, it fascinated me. It's in my area. I read the story. I contacted the person that had a copy. I got a copy, disassembled it. Which back then, it's merely a matter of, you know, of taking uh, the, the code, all right, um, and looking at what's really happening. Mm -hmm. at, the, at the very bottom, how the, how the code interacts with the machine. It's called machine language. Right? Yeah. So, did a disassembly and go, damn, this is trivial. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Why didn't I think of this? And then at the same time, I thought, okay, well, so now that this is here, what can be done? And it's instantly I go, oh, oh, this can be done. Okay. And I, I spent two days, wrote a program, threw it up on my bulletin board, which was back then all we had mm -hmm. for, the, for the internet, yeah. a collection of thousands of bulletin boards around the country. I ran one of the largest in Silicon Valley. Anyway, put it up on the bulletin board and forgot it. Mm. Two days later, over a million people had downloaded it. Oh, wow. Over a million people, and that was the beginning of the company. In that time, that's huge. Oh, fuck yes, that was big. Uh, a million people in, in, that, in that the late well, 80s. In the, first, in the first six months, I didn't even have a company. I, I lived in a tiny house in Santa Clara. I had hired four people, all of whom were in the house, living in the house with me, mm -hmm. working. We didn't have time to get to an office. In six months, I had made $30 million. Mm -hmm. And six months later, the game was over. I mean, I had won the antivirus market. Mm -hmm. So, um, just one of those... Uh, it just, it just that the and time and the place was right. It just kind of happened. You a, found, yeah, a, yeah, found an issue. You have to take advantage. You have to yeah. pick up the opportunity and run with it. That's a, it's just a great story. And then from there, you know, has it almost been a blur for you since I'm then? I'm sorry? Has it been a blur for you since then? Is it no, not at all. Time for it. clear, actually. Very clear. Every, very clear. Every aspect, every, every step, every oh. adventure. I'm going to ask you, is the crypto market, does it... Uh, remind you of that time period, of the early internet? Well, that's a good question. That's a very good question. Okay, now, does it remind me? Yes and no. Because the early days of the internet 
were filled with people that were brilliant and whose only goal was to create something new, which they did, which we all used. The crypto market is a perversion of what happened back in the 80s when the internet came around. Mm -hmm. The perversion is this. It's filled with people wanting to do something creative to change the world, mm -hmm. but no one's buying it. Think about it, okay? Mm -hmm. You go, what are ICOs? The most profoundly, read some of these white papers for fuck's sake, <laughs> profoundly world-changing ideas. Mm -hmm. And instead of like in the, the late 80s where we grabbed them, ran with them, and built on them, yeah. we grabbed them, stored them in a wallet, and sell them as soon as the price goes up. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that greed has perverted the state of innovation that exists in every human? There is the difference, and I'm glad you asked that question because finally, today, at this very moment, I myself now understand what that difference is mm -hmm. because of the question. Thank you, my friend. Good question. So, um, I was thinking about a um a reason to, to to maybe make the correlation that some of the people are just using the ICOs as currency. <clears throat> no, some of the people are all oh, fucking but yeah, people. Basically, okay, Nobody all is using, no one is using coins for the purpose in which they were intended. intended. Mm -hmm. Fuck me, no. Is it because it's such a competitive space? No, it's because you can make so much fucking money. That's why. Mm -hmm. You can take an ICO, buy it you know, for 50 cents, and in six months, it might be $50. Mm -hmm. So no, no one gives a shit about what the coin's all about. Mm -hmm. they just want, is it a good idea? Perfect, let's buy some. But no one's using it. Nobody, this is the tragedy. Mm -hmm. Every innovation has been reduced to an investment. Yeah. So if there was one thing you there's could... There's a tragedy here. If, you can, if there's one thing you could tell people to make sure these ideas are used for what they're meant to be, what would you say to them directly? And that would be my final question. <laughs> if I could tell you <laughs> anything at all that would make you treat these coins like they were the valuable tools, new tools, that could change your life, if I could say anything at all that would make you do that, I would say it. But unfortunately, we are greedy creatures as humans. And if we have the option of changing the world, or very quickly changing our own economic status, we will choose the latter. I have observed it in 100% of the cases. I, I am sorry to be so cynical no, this that's... morning. But this is the truth mm -hmm. that I'm telling you. It's a sad truth. But it is reality. But it is reality. I'm sorry, people. I'm mm -hmm. really sorry. I wish this was the beginning of the minute. And it started out, it started out this way. It did. Yeah. And it was only when people began to see, good God Almighty, in this changing of the world, the turning the power structure upside down, the giving of freedom mm -hmm. to people, God, there's a lot of money to be had here. And everybody went for the money. Yeah. So you're not freeing yourself anymore. Cryptocurrency is not creating a new world order. It's really changing that new world order so that you, the crypto users and crypto aficionados, will have the money and the power, but you'll still be in that cage. That's true. Well, that's it. I, I appreciate uh, the time you've given us and your hospitality. Very generous. One of the most generous people well, I didn't know I've ever coming. met. In fact, I almost shot the guys when he came. He said, these fuckers that I'm staying here, I mean, look at this guy. He's got a beard. <laughs> yeah, that guy looks like he could have just gotten out of prison. <laughs> I'm joking. Yes, of course. <laughs> so he can relate to us. You know, he can relate. <laughs>